A common question that I'm often asked is, what products do I consider as being essential for art journaling? So I'm going to answer that question today, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my top five products that I can't live without. So we'll start at the very beginning. So the first essential product for me is gesso. Now gesso comes in um, white or black or clear even and is a primer as it says here on this one. Now gesso is one of those products which is available from most producers. You can buy it from Ranger, you can buy it from Prima, you can buy it from all kinds of different um, outlets but primarily comes in those three colours. So you have a clear one, you have a black one. Let me have a look, see if I have actually got a clear one. Yes, I do. There we go. So we have this one's from Prima, this one's from Winsor & Newton, which is a large one litre tub of the white. Um, indigo blue, do a black and white. And I've also got a black gesso from Dina Wakeley. Now, out of these, I think the priority one for me is the white. Now, mainly because um, not only can you use the white gesso um, to paint it over a background to knock it back if the colours are a little bit too bright, it does give you a, a, a thin layer of <coughs> um, opacity, if you like. If you've got a, a colour or a, a pattern or something in the background that you think is too striking, then you can use a thin coat of the white gesso to paint over the top or even apply with a baby wipe and that will knock those colours back. Um, the other great thing about using white gesso is that you can also add this to other colours, particularly acrylic paints. If you wanted to, if you have like a, a really bright red and you wanted a pastel colour, you can add this to it to knock that back too. So it can also be used as a, a highlighter. So if you want to add this through a stencil later on in the production of your project then you can also add that too. So white gesso for me is probably um, my number one product, um, not in necessarily any order of preference but this is the one that I would use or pick up first if my house was on fire. So if I was going to grab anything this would be the one that I would go for first or any of the white gessos. Obviously if you wanted a colour to add to darken then black gesso is good for that but you can also add other colours together to darken you don't necessarily need black gesso so for me the first essential is white gesso so must have product number two a uh, little bit of a cheat because it's not just one it's four but it's the same product just in different colours so my next must-have is a basic collection of acrylic paint. Now, with these three colours, you can make up any other colour that you need. So you can make green, you can make purple, you can make orange, or any mixture of those once you get going. You could do green and then mix the green with the blue to create turquoise and so on. So from those you can pretty much make any other colour. Excuse me. If you purchase one of these or download a picture of a colour wheel from the internet from there are many 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 um, you can pretty much go to the colour that you want to create and it will tell you how to create those, those colours or those shades that you want and you can see that just by mixing those colours up, you know what you're going to get. So from those three colours, you can create any other colour. Now theoretically you also should be able to create an almost black. But if you also have a black in your collection, if you team that up with your white gesso that you've already got, you can create pastels or you can create shades. So you can go lighter and you can go darker. And with those three colours in your collection, you can pretty much create any colour that you want. So this is why these are my essential 
acrylic paint. So number three on my list is some form of glue. So for me, I prefer to use a gel medium to stick whatever collage elements I'm putting down onto my art journal pages. So if I'm sticking down um, napkins or tissue paper or torn book text or even images cut out from magazines, that kind of stuff, I want to use some kind of gel medium. Now for me, my preference is the matte. Now uh, I have used glossy um, gel medium in the past, but for me I prefer the matte and I like to use the matte from Mod Podge. Now there are other brands available obviously, um, lots of different companies make it. This is one from Indigo Blue, this is a um, gel medium from um, New Windsor & Newton. Now this is a structure gel so it's a bit thicker but can be used exactly the same way and Golden also have a, a range of matte mediums as do Prima, not necessarily matte mediums, they also have satin, they also have um, have gloss too but you know you find the one that you like to use the most and that's the one you stick with and for me to be able to stick things down with ease and this isn't that expensive as well um, it's quite affordable and there are other like I said other brands on there but this is the one that I found that I like the most and it comes in a tub which isn't too large so I can throw this in my craft bag if I want to uh, if I'm going away somewhere. So this is big enough to actually be able to carry around with it. So this is the one that I would definitely go for. But as I say, you may have a different preference or you may want to find one that you've got that is a little bit cheaper. Um, but this is the one that I would definitely pick out if my house was on fire and I had to get out in a hurry. So number four on my list of must have products are stencils. Now, there are thousands, probably millions of different stencil designs out there on the market. And they can range in price from expensive to very, very inexpensive. And they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, you can get the DL sized ones, the 6x6 ones, you can get 12x12s, you can get A5s, there are 5x8s, there are all sorts of different shapes and sizes for stencils. Now, stencils for me, are an essential part of art journaling because not only can you put um, ink through these, you can also put paint through these, but these can also be used for getting texture on your art journal pages by passing modeling or texture paste through them too. Um, and if you add color to your texture on modeling paste, you can have color 3D on your art journal pages. So stencils are a great way to add texture and layering to an art journal page. Now which ones would you go for? For me this stencil has been my main go-to stencil. This is probably one of the first stencils I ever bought and it's one that I use constantly. Now this is the Art Is stencil from the Crafters Workshop. TCW and this is my go-to stencil mainly because I can add different colours through this, I can add modelling paste through this to give me that raised text texture but I can also use ink through this in various different colours and layer but it's also script so not only do I get the texture, not only do I get the layers but I also have a stencil that has a script effect as well. So I don't need a script stamp. I don't need to use a tissue paper that has script on it. I have this. So this is a multi-use stencil for me. So for me, for modeling paste, for inks, for paints, and also for highlighting white gesso through this when I'm finishing off a page is a great and um, varied use of this particular stencil. So for me, out of all of the stencils that I've got, and I have a lot, if I had to choose one stencil, this one would be it. So finally, number five for my must-have products that I can't live without. So it's a pen. Well, not just one actually, but two. I'm cheating slightly, but you'll see why. So for me, having something to be able to write on your art journal pages or projects 
is an absolute godsend because you can add your text to it, you can add your journaling to your page, and you can also add doodles, highlights, you can also add scribbly lines, and for that uh, I've chosen a white and a black. Now these are obviously opposite sides of the spectrum, so the black one, which is the food, food ball pen or food a ball pen, depending on how you want to pronounce it, which is distributed by Ranger Inc. Um, and I found that this one, out of all of the permanent pens that I've used, this one works the best for writing on acrylic, on matte medium, on any kind of non-porous surface. So this one performs best for me out of all of the black pens that I've tried. And on the other side, the Uniball Signo Broad White Opaque Rollerball Pen, which is from the Mitsubishi Pencil Co., also does exactly the same thing as the Foodie Ball, but it's white. And this one is the one that I find performs the best overall writing on those types of surfaces, exactly the same way as the Food Ball Pen. So for me, these two are the essential writing tools for art journaling, and these are the ones that I would rescue from any house fire. So there you have it. There's my top five products for art journaling. So it's not an extensive collection, but with those tools, with those products, you can pretty much do anything you want to any art journal page. Obviously, you need some kind of focal point, but that can be your journaling if you want it to. You can doodle, you can paint, you can put stencil, you can put texture through. Those are the products that I would rescue if my house was on fire. So I would leave everything else, um, but it wouldn't be fair to leave um, this little top five without a few honourable mentions. Now, for me, obviously, you can put paint down, you can put Mod, Pod, Mod Podge down with your fingers if you wanted to, but having a good set of brushes is also nice to have, but not necessary. Paint can be put down with almost anything. You can put paint down with a sponge, you can put paint through a stencil, with a sponge, but you can also put that through with a baby wipe as well. So you have baby wipes that get an honourable mention because they are multi-use, not only just for cleaning your hands and cleaning your work surface, but also for applying your paints, for applying anything you want to, and you can use those through a stencil too. Um, a craft sponge, now again, you can apply paint, you can apply um, Mod Podge, you can apply any kind of medium onto your page. It's good for texture, but it's also good for putting through stencils too. So, a little bit of a craft sponge. Paintbrushes, yeah. So, a nice little set of paintbrushes. But the other thing, of course, is ink blending tools. Now, you can purchase these fairly inexpensive and from most craft outlets. Now, for this, you can put use them with ink, but you can also use them with paint too. Diane Reevely swears by these to adding her paints through stencils. So these are also honourable mentions, but not for me, not necessarily must-haves. Those top five are my definites. So those are my top five products that I would find very difficult if I had to give them away. Um, so that's just my personal list. Yours may be different, so what would be nice if you, you tell me in the comments section below what your five must-have Can't Live Without products are, and it'll be interesting to see what everybody else's is. So that's all from me for today. I will see you all again real soon, but don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, please want to give it a thumbs up, share with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking this button. That's all for me. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.